Glad you could join me again today. I am um, going to talk about a mending basket today. My mother used to have uh, two baskets. She had an ironing basket and a mending basket. And of course, we know what those are for. But you know, um, probably very few of us actually have them today because with, <clears throat> excuse me, tumble dryers and uh, the new fabrics, we don't need to iron as often. And uh, clothes are uh, much less expensive than they used to be. So repairing them is not something many people do. Most people don't know how to darn socks or uh, put on a button or even uh, replace a zipper. So we've got um, uh, kind of gotten rid of our mending baskets and some of our ironing baskets for, for many of us. But years ago, it was the mending basket that actually kept the family clothed because people weren't uh, able to afford to replace their clothes, so they had to fix them. And so if you outgrew your skirt, you just let it out a little bit. And if you were lucky enough to lose weight, you took your skirt in a little bit and you made things last a lot longer. Well, I kind of got to thinking about this idea of mending because I was reading another of those little old books that my friend had given me. This one is called Within My Home by Eleanor Vellicott Wood. And she starts this little chapter with a story about a woman who's uh, tired from the long work of the day, and yet she sat down at night to do her mending. Her basket is full, and she sits by the fire and repairs as many of the articles of clothing as she possibly can before bedtime. And then she takes her aching back and her sore fingers up to her bed, and as is her custom, she begins to read her Bible, and she comes to a scripture that starts her thinking. And the scripture is 1 Peter 5.10. The King James reads, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. But the woman in the story is reading from a translation by Moffat. And in place of perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle, it uses these three words, repair, recruit, and strengthen. And it was the word repair that had caught her attention because she had been doing just that all evening, repairing and mending. So today, let's visit a little bit about mending. Now we know what it means. It means to put something back together to repair it or to restore it to usefulness. And when Peter penned these words in 1 Peter 5.10, he knew what it meant to repair or to mend because he was often mending his nets by the Sea of Galilee. And that's exactly what James and John were doing when Jesus called them. They were there mending their nets. So the disciples knew what it meant and what it took to uh, put together broken ends. And when Peter denied the Lord, he also knew what it meant to need the Lord to repair him. In Ezekiel 34, 16, God says, I will seek that which was lost, I will bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which is broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. And that's what Jesus did for Peter. Remember he said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me three times? And that's what Jesus was doing there at the end of John. He was repairing uh, Peter and restoring him to usefulness, because we know from there we go on into the book of Acts, and we see Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 souls being saved. So Jesus repaired, he mended Peter from the break that was in his life. And I got to thinking, how many times have we found ourselves uh, with ugly tears in our lives that really only the master's hand can repair? We have lost our temper, we have become um, harassed by things that we have undone, sol solutions that have not been found, problems that, that keep haunting us. We fail to express the patience and the care we need to those around us. And there are just many, many breaks in our net, far too many to list. And we need that expert mender, don't we? Jesus is the divine mender. He knows how to put us back together and restore us to usefulness. So friend, we must fall on our knees and ask the Lord to mend the break of sin in our life, not only for salvation, but also for sanctification, because we need his mending hands to touch us, to bind up our wounds, and to uh, heal our broken hearts, as we see in Psalm 147 and verse 3. And you know what? No other hands can do that but Jesus. He is the only one who really can uh, repair us, restore us, mend us in a way that puts us back on our feet again. The author writes, they, 
speaking of Jesus' hands, were pierced by the nails of Calvary, and three days later they burst the bonds of death in order that they might mend this cruel break. Wonderful, triumphant mender. Nothing is beyond his power. The break of sin in your life may have been grievous, but the God of all grace will repair you. And this is the gospel story. He came to mend the break of sin in our lives to restore us to usefulness. And our mending was very costly. Jesus paid the bitter price of the denial. He paid the treacherous act of betrayal, and he gave his life to make us whole. And yet how gently and patiently he touches our wounded places that are caused by our sin and our self-will. He gives us back the wasted years. He mends our mistake. He restores us to usefulness for God's glory. And then, what does he call us to do? You know, he wants us to be menders as well. We are to bear burdens, to speak the truth in love, to warn and to encourage each other, to provoke each other to good works. And I want you to listen to this list from Isaiah 58, verses 6 and 7. He calls his children to do these things, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, to deal bread to the hungry, to bring the poor to their houses, and to make garments for those without clothing. In the little book, Eleanor writes, Homely work, this, within the power of every woman. It is possible, she writes, that someone might write her name against at least one item on this list, and in doing so, might volunteer for some special bit of mending work. To become, as Isaiah 58, 12 says, the repairer of the breach. And you know what? It's a wonderful thing that the Lord can and will repair us. And we all need our broken bits fixed and our wounds bound up and our broken hearts healed by the Master. But if we take without giving in return, we are unprofitable and unthankful servants. So today, let me challenge you that instead of resting in the fact that God has graciously mended you, look for someone who needs his touch, who needs your hand, your encouragement, who is in your mending basket. Those who need your help, those who need to break free from wickedness, those that need someone to help them carry a heavy burden, who need food enough to eat, who need heat in their homes or a coat on their back or shoes for their children's feet. You know, God wants us to be active, mending others. Galatians 6, 1 says, if we're spiritual, we should restore one another. We need to be caring and helping to carry the burdens along with others. And are we willing? Well, I hope so. There are so many people that need help today, and more of us need to get out our needle and thread and weave strength back into our homes, into our communities, and into our churches. And then we too can be known as someone who is a repairer of the breach. Thank you.